Today, I'm going to make a tier list of all the mission types in Deep Rock Galactic. Along the way, I'll also talk a little bit about how I approach each mission, so hopefully you can extract some value out of this slop. Uh, before we start, I'd like to talk a little bit about what I value and from what perspectives I'm coming from. I mainly play the game in well-coordinated teams on a difficulty that's considered very challenging for me, so I will be pretty combat biased. I'm a modded difficulty player, primarily, so I mostly play the game in a way that dramatically increases the difficulty of the combat, and that's what I find most interesting about the game. My values might not align with yours because of this. What I value in a mission type is that it has some sort of pacing mechanic that forces the player to go reasonably fast, or at least rewards the player for going fast. Uh, in most mission types, this is just nitro pressure. Right, The amount of time you stay in a mission will determine how many resupplies you use, and eventually you run out of resupplies and die. In some missions, that's uh, like Escort, it's, uh, it's some outside force that's forcing you to pace, but most of the time this is just Nitro. I also enjoy it when the mission type has challenging combat, when there are caves with tons of stationaries in them, and when there are uh, dangerous portions of the mission which force you to play in novel, interesting combat scenarios, which can uh, sometimes wipe you. That's enjoyable to me. I enjoy objectives that are conducive to combat. Um, for example, mining is a mission type with an objective that is really, really conducive to combat, because it's an objective which can be done nearly instantly and effortlessly if you kill all the bugs, right? There's, If there are no bugs, you could just walk up to the Mordkite and hold your pickaxe button, and you'd finish the mission in type in five minutes. But because of the combat in that mission, you have to fight the bugs before you can complete the objective. And then when you do fight the bugs and and kill them all, then the objective gets completed relatively fast. I value that. I don't like holding E for like 20 seconds for no reason. I like it when caves have relatively pleasant generation. So I like them to be traversable by all the classes fairly reasonably and fairly quickly. Um, especially as Gunner. Gunner can really suffer in some caves, like uh, large egg caves or point extraction caves. Um, and when caves are like that, a lot of the time that just forces the scout to do the objective, which is not good to me. I also like it when the mission type encourages exploration and movement. You should be incentivized to interact with novel and difficult terrain because it rewards you with some sort of pacing or objective um, stuff. So I like it when a mission type makes you move around instead of just rewarding you for staying in one place and waiting for your scout to do the whole objective. Throughout this video, I'll be using some terms like stationaries, encounters, and hot drop. Stationaries are just um, the enemies that come in the cave that don't move at all, like spitballers, leeches, nexuses, breeders. Breeders move, but they're stationaries. Um, encounters are just pre-existing enemies, so the ones that are already in the cave when you drop into a mission type. Um, mostly that's just Mactera, Grunts, and Spitters, because they're the vast majority of the encounter pool. Um, and hot drops are when you are dropped straight into en encounters and stationaries, so you have to contend with um, a bunch of enemies as soon as you get into the mission, and oftentimes that involves dealing with very difficult terrain while simultaneously taking on a lot of combat pressure. Without further ado, let's get into the tier list. And we're going to start with mining. Mining is the most bare-bones mission type. It's the simplest, right? The objective is just to go through all the cave, get all the more, okay? Uh, you drop into a safe starting cave, which oftentimes has 40 nitra for 50 nitra. For me, that's a resupply um, in modded difficulties. Um, you have sets of tunnels and pretty traversable caves in the mission. So you walk through a tunnel, and then you enter a cave, and then the Morkite nitro is in that cave. Some of it, sometimes it's in the tunnel, most of it is in the cave. And then you get through a dirt and reach the next tunnel. Um, all along this way, you have announced swarms and waves at a constant time frame. This leads to this sort of interesting combat mission rhythm, where you uh, start the mission, you get a get a resupply, mine some more kit, and then you walk through the tunnel, hit the cave. You have to contend with the stationaries, the encounters in the cave. You have to clear the cave as fast as possible before the swarm hits, because you usually want to fight in the tunnel, and it's ideal to be into the next tunnel, past the first cave, past the dirt, before the first swarm hits. Um, 
this is a, a pretty advantageous position to be in pacing wise, right? So a lot of the time you have this interesting dynamic where you're just sending it down the tunnels uh, with a lot of incentives to walk fast through the, through the mission and then you send it through the cave and kill stationaries and then rush dirt and then fight the storm after the dirt in the tunnel where because tunnels are way safer to fight in compared to caves because you have fewer sight lines you have a little like a flat nice space you uh don't get sniped from above you by Nakatera. it's just very nice to fight in tunnels um on top of that mining actually has very tight nitro economy um, you might not notice it since I mostly upload mining solos, but for a while there was a time when the team I played with thought that in one of the difficulties that we play, 225 Morkite mining missions were like actually impossible because they constantly nitro starved. Um, mining is a mission type that really enforces pacing and really encourages pacing because you have to breach into the cave to get to the nitra, but breaching into the cave um, is, a, is a challenging combat task, so it uh, really pressures the team to fight and pace as fast as possible um the mining objective is also like pretty good i use it as an example of an objective that i like like mining morkai is just is just satisfying and it takes very little time and um even the high up stuff you can just plot it and most of it is accessible to the whole team just a great mission type like probably the most fundamentally solid mission type in the game uh easy s tier for me next we have eggs uh, this is like kind of two different mission types depending on complexity um four and six eggs are like pretty similar and then eight eggs are pretty dramatically different um in four and six eggs you drop into a starting room which has like one or two stationaries at most usually and then you'll go through dirt to enter a main cave where most of the eggs are and a pretty high number of stationaries are Along this way, you have no announced storms. Uh, it's just ambient waves, um, and that persists through the entire mission. The only way to get any announced storm is by pulling eggs. Eight is uh, fundamentally kind of similar, but you start with a big hot drop, and then you have an enormous cave, usually, um, that is like ridiculously large, so large that you don't really want to clear the whole thing. Uh, because of that, it's a uh, pretty different mission type. In four and six eggs, you usually just kill everything in the entire cave before you start pulling any eggs at all, or at least that's how I think the mission type should be played optimally. Whereas with eight eggs, you usually want to clear out one part of the cave and then pull some eggs from there and move to clear other parts of the cave, pull eggs from there, and so on and so forth. Um, my main issue with eggs is that there are no pacing concerns whatsoever. The lack of any sort of timed announced swarms means that you can just like sit around forever and the the caves give you like infinite nitro to play with. You get absurd amounts of nitra. Um, and because there are no announced swarms, aside from the player controlled announced swarms, like you get to determine when you have to fight and when you don't have to fight. Um, there's a like there's too much player control over pacing. You just you can just laze around all day. Uh, they're like Plenty of times when, even in the lobbies I play in, where the team is pretty coordinated and pretty uh, focused on doing things efficiently, like you can just like have forty minute egg missions, uh, like forty minute eight eggs, for example, um, and you're totally fine, and you still have like two resupplies at the end of it. Uh, that is not desirable to me. You might say like, oh, you're a modded player, you have like a million resupplies. No, no, and like in minings, you are constantly on the edge of having zero resupplies. Um, eggs just have very, 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 very little pacing pressure. Um, and on top of that, four and six eggs, it's like very optimal to just sit in one location while your scout pulls every egg for you because it's like dangerous to walk outside of your hold. Um, and there's just no pacing reward for walking outside of your hold, especially since uh, a lot of the time the eggs are like in the ceiling and they're incredibly difficult to access for anybody but scout. Um, and stacking them like... It can be good, but the chance of pulling two announced storms at once is enough that you really don't want to do it if your goal is to win uh, as many missions as possible. Um, or not as many, but as win all of your missions, rather. Um, in the background, you might see us playing with more egg swarms. So one of the things that we do to make this mission type more engaging is make it so that like uh, more of the eggs give you announced swarms. 
even that isn't really enough to make the mission type engaging. You still have way too much control over when you actually have to fight and when you don't have to fight. And in in these sorts of in that scenario where you increase the announced rooms, it's even more optimal to just like not be outside when you pull eggs. Uh, and that sucks because like I like it when I get to move around the cave and like do things. But this this mission type so often is just like sit in one place and your scout does the objective because it's you're gonna die if you move out. Um. Despite that, I do think this mission type does have some merits. Like the the stationaries are cool. The hot drop in eight egg is pretty decent, um, and I like I like I kind of like the idea of like, you know, traversing the cave and finding all these little little trinkets to collect or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. Next is refinery. Oh boy, uh, this used to be one of my favorites actually. Um, it's one of the few mission types with a hot drop, and it has like the hardest hot drop in the entire game. Um, when you drop into the mission type, there's like a million stationaries, and there's so many encounters, and a lot of the time you're floating in the air, and you don't really have good vision since you're inside the drop pod. Um, and refinery caves have oftentimes have actually very difficult terrain to navigate around. Um, and in some in some cases, this can be bad, but in the during the hot drop, it's actually really exciting to have to like constantly run around and look for a place that's acceptable to fight especially since the first announced swarm comes like very very fast you're dealing with this hot drop and all of a sudden mission control announces that like oh the first storm is coming and you're fucked um there are tons of stationaries in this mission type too and because the caves tend to be generate so open and large you end up having a lot of line of sight to spitballers and whatever so the hot drops are extremely difficult, extremely punishing, and one of the biggest tests of teamwork in the entire game, really, in modded difficulties, at least. Um, in refineries, there's usually one big starting cave and then um, and then a side cave with a tunnel leading to it. A lot of the time, that tunnel is the best place to fight in, uh, and it, you know, that's the thing that encourages exploring because you have to try to find that tunnel. Um, and because the first storm hits so fast, early on you have an enormous amount of nitro pressure. You start with no resupply, and your scout really has to scramble to try to get you your first resupply before the first storm, or your team will just wipe. Uh, because the hot drop already drains so much of your resources, and you already have to spend so much health, so much ammo, uh, so much effort clearing out the cave. And on top of that, you have to help the scout get that first resupply, because most scouts if they're playing a difficulty that's difficult for them, won't be able to just solo the entire refinery and solo all the stationaries and all the bugs and leeches and just get to the refinery and deposit a resupply. Um, so there's this push-pull in the hot drop of like making sure that your team is safe, but also making enough cave progress that your scout can find a safe path and deposit in the, uh, in the, up, uh, in the mine head, ideally without dying. So the hot drop, amazing a really really exciting part of the mission type and maybe one of my favorite moments in all of modded um after that though i think the mission type like drops off a little bit um like after you've killed all the stationaries you're like laying pipes laying pipes is pretty fun uh you have to like explore the cave and find all these different sections and like do all this novel building mechanic uh which is sort of cool um but then after that it's it's I, I hate this mission type like it's just e holding building the pipes for for, uh, for one is just you hold e you move a little bit you hold e and it's like oftentimes you'll spend like two minutes just holding e in the mission type um, and then you press the button and then oh look you have to hold e again and the thing is after you press the button you've explored the entire cave right like you've seen everything there's the see you've gotten the vast majority of the resources that you're going to get from the cave um and you're just like you're just sitting there you're usually sitting there in a very very well established hold uh you sit there with like a million resupplies because refinery gives you a lot of resupplies after you get your first um and you're just like you're just waiting there and and then you go and you hold e for a little bit and then you go back and you wait and then you go and hold e for a little bit and you go back and wait uh that really sucks that part of the mission is incredibly boring it's like all the bad things about eggs except you don't even get good combat at all because at this point you there are no more announced swarms it's just like really small waves um in the first part of the mission there's announced swarms but now it's just there's just like no combat there's nothing you just go out you hold the um and if your difficulty gets hard enough 
a lot of the time the e holding isn't even like trivial like you have to like go out in groups of like two or three um which makes it incredibly slow to complete but nothing spawns this time so like it doesn't matter that you take a million years to complete the mission type because the mission type stops enforcing any sort of pacing after you press the button um refinery has really 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 high highs the hot drop is amazing peak drg to me but after that it has one of the most horrendous lows in any mission type and because of that i find it really hard to give it anything higher than a b tier it's better than egg just because of the hot drop but uh but i i don't think i can give it an a maybe a little bit controversial i know a lot of people love refinery but this is just my perspective as a modded player with my head up my ass um, next we have Salvage. This mission type also has a, a starting cave. Um, in the starting cave sometimes you have Nitro, sometimes you have a mule, but usually you don't get a resupply before you breach into the main cave. And the main cave is enormous. It has a lot of stationaries, it has um, a, an, an insane amount of encounters, it's it's a really difficult cave, and a lot of the time uh, you get close enough to it that like breeders start spawning stuff and you have to contend with that and you have to kill them fast enough and you have to kill the nexuses if they're dangerous and you have to kill the breeders fast enough that you don't get like completely overwhelmed by trickle and die of attrition um especially in this early phase where you usually don't have a resupply um one of the ways that the the mission type encourages you to complete the objective is that when you go onto a mule and you repair it you get some nitra um, and in the difficulties I play, oftentimes that's enough for a resupply. Uh, that's good. That's like an awesome pacing mechanic. It's sort of like a mining, right? Like where you complete the objective and along with the objective, you get some Nitra. But salvages also spawn two waves when you uh, walk on top of a mule. So you are contending with this like push-pull of both having to fight when you want to get this Nitra, but also needing to get Nitra because you're going to starve and die if you don't have it. Um, that's really cool. That's awesome. Uh, I love the way salvages do pacing in this uh, in this way. And first resupply can all often be a struggle to help your scout get into the uh, in, into Molly, um, which is a lot of fun to me. And this mission type actually has reasonably tight Nitra economy. Like, it's not like super super regular that you die to salvage Nitra Starve, but it happens like reasonably often, and you have to think about it. Um. After you repair the mules, you get the uplink and you get the refuel. And the mission type usually uh, has this thing where, like, around the drop pod, usually because the drop pod needs some level of clear space to, like, to, or it spawns in with, the, like, some clear space around it, uh, usually that can be a goal for your team to move towards it to, like, set up a hold that will then transition into your uplink hold. Um, which is very cool to me. It gives you a pacing, it gives you a positional goal, um, and it gives you also like a, a, a place where you can consistently walk out of the tunnel um, that you start in, so you can like reach into the cave and not just have to stand there farming all the uh, all the enemies in, in your tunnel. Um, at the end of this mission, you have two extremely punishing uh, moments where you have the bubble holds and you fail if you don't stand in them as a team um, for long enough. That's really scary. The spawns in that section usually don't tend to be very high, even like in modded, but sometimes there's like a bulk and then you just lose the mission, which kind of sucks. But on the other hand, I actually kind of don't mind it that much. Um, the salvage bubbles force you to contend with unfavorable terrain in a way that really no other part of any other mission type does, because you're forced to stay in this one area and you're forced to stand your ground. Um, salvages are oftentimes the point where you see the most creative repellent setups come into play and the most creative terraforming happen, uh, which is really cool to me. I enjoy it when you are forced to use your like terrain manipulation tools to some extent um, to interact with novel difficult terrain um in some scenarios like just making like a bunker is really not engaging gameplay to me but because salvages have this bubble thing it's i mean unless you like drill straight down and make a bunker there it's uh it's not really conducive to bunkering and so you oftentimes have a 
like a variety of different salvage holds that you uh, end up holding in, which uh, is, you know, it's novel. There are novel combat uh, scenarios, which is enjoyable to me. To me, salvage is like maybe uh, like a, an amalgamation of all the best parts of the game. Um, you have this really difficult cave breach with some pacing pressure and you have to force the resupply. And then you have these objectives that are reasonably quick to finish if you can like just like go in and repair the mules, right? Like you can do that really, really quick. You can do like a, a, a salvage in like six or seven minutes if you're really uh, fast with it. Um, but all this difficult combat and the combat that comes from the from triggering the mule waves um, makes this mission type uh, a very interesting dynamic mission type where, where you want to pace through the mission pretty fast and you have some ex existent nitro pressure that gets alleviated when you do the objective but doing the objective requires that you kill enemies um this is just like really well paced to me and then the final bubbles they maybe overstay their welcome a bit maybe you have to do them for a little too long uh but i i still enjoy them and salvages are both really exciting dynamic and difficult but also very novel and they introduced a lot of different situations and you have to explore different types of caves um one of the weird things with this mission type is a side cave which like usually has nothing in it um but overall i think salvages are like an s tier mission type to me they check all my boxes maybe they're a little bit bs but honestly they're even better than minings in my view they just uh they just have a little bit of everything and that's that's really awesome next we have point extractions. I get the impression that uh, that vanilla players think this is actually a really difficult mission type. Um, to me, I don't share this perspective, and I'll go over why. Um, the hot drop in this mission type is not the hardest. Like, you drop in, but there aren't that many stationaries throughout the entire cave. Um, I'm not sure exactly why this is, but there just, just aren't very mission, um, many stationaries, so it's not that challenging. Um, and the way this mission type handles swarms is a little different compared to every one, other one. Like there's this, um, there are periodic waves, ambient waves that get faster and harder as the mission type goes on, but they start out very slow. And uh, I don't think that we can even change this with custom difficulty. So you end up getting like hazard five type pacing, even in the really hard difficulties. Um, the mission type gives you plenty of nitra, um, in a large singular cave, um, and the large singular cave pulls from a, a, a tile set, like a, a set of caves that's different compared to, um, all the other mission types in the game, and a lot of these caves, like, really suck. Like, there's this one with the center room and a bunch of tiny tunnels on the side that, like, there's just nowhere to, like, play in that mission type. Um, it's really annoying, and then there are, like, these enormous caves with, like, the upper lower section, and... I don't know, it's just like, they're just weird, they're, which can be fun, but like, there are not that many of them, so you end up, if you play for like, a reasonable amount of time, maybe unreasonable amount of time, um, you end up like, recognizing all of them on site, and, uh, and they're all uncomfortable to play in, and they're all like, they all take, like, liberal use of gunner zip lines to like, to traverse, to get to the objective, um, so that's that's a that's a takeoff. But on top of that, the way that this mission type is um, laid out, it encourages like it doesn't encourage pacing uh, in the way that other mission types do, um, because uh, because all of the objectives are like spread across the cave in a bunch of random places, and you like drop down in like near the middle or something. And you always have to come back to this mine head. There's very very little benefit to like actually standing and holding your ground right like in a mining you want to stand and hold your ground so that you can move forward afterwards you don't want to be forced back and moving forwards is dangerous right um but in point extraction you usually just kill everything and then there's no incentive to move um to to, to stay in one position to like pace and because of this a lot of the time even in like difficult modded lobbies you just like jump around in random directions everyone splits off and goes uh goes and goes and gets aquarks um, like, the, the act of juggling aquarks is pretty fun, but, uh, the, the issue is as combat gets harder and harder, you don't really get to, like, do that very often. You just, you just, like, sort of, you just sort of sit, sit in, and jump around as you 
fight the swarm and then you go and do like an aquark or two um but you don't really get to like contend with juggling aquarks while fighting the swarm because you're just gonna die if you're playing it difficultly that's pretty difficult to you but on top of that if your team is like pretty competent at the mission type you just like finish in less than 10 minutes extremely consistently and because the ambient waves like don't actually scale well with difficulty uh you like barely fight at all you fight like one or two swarms and you have like two resupplies left over at the end or more um if you actually go and take your time to scour the cave you don't have to kill that many stationaries you just get in you do a bunch of aquarks mostly your driller pulls them because they're they're really good at it and they won't die while doing it or your scud pulls them because they they're grappling they have a grappling hook and then it's like it's just like a nothing mission type like you like nothing happens in the mission type um it's just not paced super super well and it doesn't encourage like really good pacing really like because i mean and to some extent there's this idea that like oh if you take too long on this mission type you have to deal with really really fast and difficult ways right but like if you're pretty familiar with the game even in a difficulty that's like hard for you 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 don't actually have to you just have so much downtime and and the, you don't actually have to do that many aquarks it's just it's just not very exciting as a mission type um and the hot drop isn't even good <laughs> because of this i'm going to have to put it in c tier um it's like it's easy it's pretty boring i don't know i just i'm just not a fan um next is a controversial one escort uh you drop into a starting room with usually one or two resupplies um and then you go through a tunnel or direct it mines through a tunnel rather and while you're mining there's a swarm that gets announced um and then you and then Dorota drills into a cave. That cave will have stationaries, uh, and oh, quite a few of them at that, and you'll have to deal with those while you simultaneously deal with the storm behind you, and then Dorota stops for refuel, and you do the refuel, and then there are waves during the refuel. There aren't, like, full-on announced storms, I don't think. They're not as hard as, like, a mining storm, for example. Um, and then you do that again if you're in a two-stop, and then you get to the Hearthstone. The Hearthstone usually has, like, no stationaries. It's a very easy breach, but you have to contend with the storm behind you. Um, I actually like Escort a lot, which might be surprising to some people and unsurprising to others. Escort is, like, the perfect vessel for really, really brutal, challenging combat. Um, it's, like, the only mission type in the game where you're forced to simultaneously enter a new room where there are stationaries, encounters, um, and fight this swarm behind you so you're getting crunched from two sides right there's a difficult swarm behind you that's pushing you into the cave but there's also stationaries they're really dangerous things like uh in one of the difficulties i played they're like nuke ballers which shoot a nuke at you that will kill you through shield um that you have to contend with and you have to be careful about that and you have to not get leached um and it can be difficult to maintain team cohesion in this scenario because uh Doretta's, like blocking the optimal path through the cave um and you just have to deal with this very, very difficult, fast-paced combat scenario, which is incredibly exciting for me. I love escort breaches, and on top of that, like the tunnel section is can get a little sleepy at times, but it's like a respite from this really intense, difficult breach that you just experienced, where you were simultaneously getting swarmed by huge amounts of bugs from behind you, and also dealing with encounters and uh, Bartok scale brambles and barragers and nuke ballers and whatever in the in the cave itself. Um, Escort is just combat, 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 and it offers really exciting combat, um, which can actually be very, very, like, very, very punishing, and a lot of the time you'll, like, just wipe in Escort breaches, um, and then this, and then the Hearthstone at the end, the breach there is actually, like, it's not that hard, which is kind of like a... I don't know it's satisfying it's like a break like you get to the hearthstone and you're like oh there are no there are no um there are no stationaries here and i can like finally just like kite around the the hearthstone and i finally have space to move after this long time of like being cramped into these small drill dozer tunnels um you might be able to hear my love for escort uh <laughs> from the way i've been talking about this um you also have your scout like go back and do in, in the refuels you have your scout go back and do nitra and then like driller gunner ng will do uh the refuel and the refuel is actually like in pubs okay 
Refuel fucking sucks in pubs. I hate that shit. Like, people just do not know how to, like, press E on the canister. Uh, but in teams, it's honestly pretty good. Like, I don't mind refuels in teams. Um, because, like, usually you'll have two people who will actually, like, pick up the canister and do the refuel, so you're not just doing the whole objective yourself. Uh, but also you have, like, this... Um, you have you usually you call a resupply in the refuel room in modded in modded a lot of the time in has five you don't um and but on top of that you might actually have to call a second resupply or sometimes even a third if you take too long in the refuel so there is pacing pressure in the refuel um and you can get it done very very fast if you're coordinated um so there's incentives to like actually perform the refuel fast um and while in like from a speed play perspective this uh, mission type is really unexciting because like there's no space for optimization in modded a lot of the time you have like 30 minute escorts um and getting better and cutting that down to like 20 minutes can be pretty rewarding and getting like fast uh efficient refills done is is actually pretty fun uh like jumping through grunts with, with a with a can as gunner and like trying to avoid dying while also completing the objective fast it's rewarding it's fun uh, on top of that the hearthstone actually like i don't think it's that bad um at least in modded. Uh, in vanilla, a lot of the time it like really sucks because you're just standing there and waiting for the Doretta to do things and there are like no enemies, but um, when you're playing a difficulty that's like that's harder, especially like relative to your own skill, uh, Hearthstone is actually one of the most challenging combat sequences in the entire game. Um, part of this is because like you can't really get a good repel setup going in the Hearthstone room just because of the way it's set up. Um, but part of it is also because Doretta actually creates this very interesting dynamic where you have to stay near Doretta to keep her alive. Uh, and this is true for the breaches as well. Um, but on top of that, but but you don't want to stay near Doretta because um, because like bugs are there and they'll push you off Doretta and uh, septics will try to shoot Doretta and being on top of Doretta will will make it so that you draw aggro from both Doretta or you're taking range attacks that are intended for both Doretta and you. Um, and Doretta enforces pacing, and while, while holding E is like sucks, I hate the repair part of Escort, I wish it didn't really exist. Um, it, it's like, it's Doretta health is, and maintaining Doretta health is an integral part of the mission type because it forces this, like it forces you to clear enemies, right? Like it's an objective which gets uh, infinitely easier if you just kill all the enemies. Um, and in Hearthstone, there are like object additional side objectives that you have to contend with on top of the enemies. So you're dealing with a difficult swarm, but you're also dealing with rocks where your NG has to plot it off or you have to repair it, or you're dealing with uh, with uh, beamers where your gunner has to like shoot shoot down the beamer tips or your scout has to go out and like power attack them, um, or you're dealing with claw where you just die. Um, and because you have to juggle your attention between all these different things and maintain Dorota health and clear the swarm, and one person might just be like, like unable to contribute to combat because they're repairing. Um, you end up with really, really, really thrilling combat sequences, and doubly so because like, bulks spawn pretty often in the difficulty I play. <laughs> so like, a bulk will spawn, and then you have to kite around the around the Hearthstone to like avoid Dottie dying instantly to the bulk, and then you have to kite it like you have to do a coordinated team loop while your scout like like grapples in to repair and then has to grapple out you have to get back to the to Doretta to like kill all the enemies around it so the scout can repair safely for a little more and then you do another loop and you get to kill the bulk in the back it's just it's it's very exciting because there are so many different things to balance and then you also have to like kill the beamers or you have to like contend with claw and just die or you have to like uh you have to like burn iron wills to re uh revive Doretta which is actually very cool to me like it's cool that uh Doretta is an objective which is somewhat iron will agnostic to some extent like a lot of the time in Hearthstone you'll in in modded teams you'll see people like just burning with iron will to, to prepare Doretta to just buy like 20 more seconds for the team that's that's sick that's awesome I love escort uh that being said I will acknowledge there are issues with this mission type uh like, the objective is just not very good if you don't have combat. For me, the entire draw of this mission type is that, like, the combat is just fucking stellar here. Like, it's just so, so, so unbelievably fun. Um, but then, like, sometimes it's there's no combat. And then, and then the mission, there's, like, just no mission type in the mission type. And you're just, like, sitting there for 10 minutes waiting for this chunk of metal to move across the cave. 
uh, which sucks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's pretty bad. Uh, you can't really do go faster if you're like reaching the peak skill in your difficulty. Um, like, if you're very comfortable in your difficulty, this mission type just sucks because there's like there's nothing to do uh, if you're comfortable with the combat, and that that's a real flaw. Even though I'm very combat brain, that's a real flaw. Uh, because of that, I I can't justify giving it an S tier. I I would if it was like just purely enjoyment, but I think it will go in A. Um, next we have Elim. Elim, what do I say about this mission type? It's it sucks. Okay, it sucks. It really sucks. This is maybe my 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 hot take of the day, but Elim might be the worst mission type in the game. Um, you spawn into a starting room, which is like completely safe. You usually get like a resupply, maybe half a resupply here, um, and then you go into all these side caves through dirt, uh, where there are dreadnoughts. Um, usually there are more caves than there are dreadnoughts, so like only some of them will actually have the objective in them, but other but the other caves will have like nitro and whatever. Um, and in this entire mission type, there are only in ambient waves. And those ambient waves are shut down when a dreadnought is popped. Um, okay, so in some respects, I understand why people might find this mission engaging. I'm not sure I've like ever met a person who's like super into elimination, but I, I can I can see why you would, right? Like there are boss fights. People like boss fights to some extent. But once you like get familiar enough with the boss fights, especially in a full team, it's extremely hard to wipe. Like because there are no bugs or anything and there's just the one enemy like and only one person can get enemy aggro at a time unless you're finding twins different scenario but like only one person can get an enemy aggro at a time so like only one person will die at a time at the most um even in has six speeds has seven speeds like sure you expect that in most elims you'll have a couple of deaths maybe even like a lot of deaths but you almost never fail this mission type. Um, and once you're like comfortable with the dreadnought attack patterns and whatever, like it's just a snooze fest. Like you pop the dread, it stops all the way, so there's literally no pacing pressure. You get two or three resupplies, and you just you just sit there and dump into this bullet sponge that will never wipe your team. It's extremely boring. Um, in the background, you might see that we're playing an Elim. Uh, one of the solutions that we've tried to implement into eliminations is we make it so that, well, one, we've had wave spawn um, while you're fighting the dread, which it's okay. It, the, the mission type is still not very real. Like you just like, you just kite around the starting room and all the, all the bugs die gradually. And then you just shoot the dread more and the dread doesn't kill you while you're kiting around because the dread is extremely slow and it like it will not damage you very well if you're not also trying to damage it. Um, the other solution that we're we're testing out right now is that uh, we've added bulks to the mission type that just spawn whenever it dreads up and then you kill the bulk and the dread instantly dies. Um, it's been reasonably fun, but I don't think it's like a real solution to the mission type. I need to play it more, admittedly, but uh, it's like yeah, the the mission type is just not like. It's just not paced very well. Um, you still get to control when you actually have to pop the dread, even with the bulks. So like you always, you still have total control. And the caves themselves don't have like many stationaries, don't have many enemies. They're very easy to breach for the most part. Um, and the bulks actually make the mission type like harder by a significant margin because like, you know, having a bulk with you is non-trivial. Uh, and also waves spawn with the bulk. But it's still like, it's it's still really not that bad. Um, I, I just, I hate Elim. Like in, in its vanilla implementation, there's just, just, there's just nothing going for it. Like you walk into a cave and then you pop an egg and then you just spend five minutes dumping into a bullet sponge that has no threat. It has like, it's, it's a singular enemy, which you know, all the patterns of, um, and, and DRG is a game that in my opinion really thrives in its like ability to um manipulate your attention economy with a multifaceted combat issue where you're dealing with like multiple different enemies at once and you have to prioritize and you have to um like balance that with the terrain issues that uh that are presented and also you have teammates which can 
maybe complicate that solution even further, complicate the solution to your combat issue even further. And there are like many, many different enemies and many different priorities competing for like different, uh, different, yeah, different portions of your attention. But with dreads, it's just like, well, if the dread hits you, you instantly die. Don't get hit by the dread, shoot the dread. There's only one enemy. It can only aggro into one player at a time. Um, it just takes a million damage to kill it, and but it will never wipe you. Um, and that's not fun to me. I, I really hate dreads. Twins are like the best to dread because there's two of them at once, and also they die a little faster. But I, even twins are like, they're, they're D tier. They're D tier. This would be F tier if there's an F tier on this tier list. Um, but there's not, so D tier for now. Uh, next is Sabotage. Oh boy, industrial sabotage. Uh, I think probably my opinion on this will not be surprising to anyone. Um, the starting room is a starting room. You usually get a, like a resub here, um, and all the stationaries in this mission type are replaced with turrets, bot turrets. Um, this mission type is ambient waves with no swarms. So again, no pacing pressure. Uh, you know what that means. Uh, but swarms are announced when you do Haxi. Um, and then when you fight the caretaker, there are no ambient swarms and there's no announced swarms at all. Um, this is compounded with the issue that this, uh, uh that this mission has like absurd nitro economy. Like you get like a, a million resupplies in the shit. Like it's impossible to run out of nitro outside of extreme circumstances here. Um, in the background, you'll see gameplay footage where we're playing with, uh, with announced swarms, so like mining swarms on top of, um, on top of the ambient waves, and like this can extend mi the mission type into like a forty-minute slog. It doesn't here because Sabo is just like an easy mission type, but it, it, even if you're like spending forty minutes in the mission type, you're still not running out of nitro. It's genuinely ludicrous how many resupplies you get here. Um. So so I have a lot of problems with this mission type, right? The turrets are, they're not interesting. They're not interesting enemies. You can see me in the background, like just overheating them all. Um, if you know how to deal with them, they, they, they're like, they're effortless to kill. They die to like one little application of sticky flames. Uh, everyone brings heat on this. Everyone brings fire. It's trivial. They die to hellfire. Um, and they're just not as interesting a dynamic as the base stationary pool, like, right? Like spitballers, uh, like spitballers are like, they're like burst turrets, but like ten times more interesting because they're they're the the way you dodge them is more interesting. They have a bigger weak point, but they have uh they're more punishing. Um, repulsion turrets fucking suck. I hate dealing with them. Like shields annoying. Uh, sniper turrets are completely trivial. You shoot them twice and they die instantly. Um, uh, and the punishment for like not shooting them is still not very high. You can still like just dodge them straight up. On um, like leeches, which you know. Uh, you need to light them up. Um, they they instantly kill you if they grab you. They're cool. They're swag. They're chill. Um, the stationaries in Sabo are just not good. I don't like turrets. Um, I also don't like bots very much. Uh, in the caretaker fight, the caretaker spawns um, you know a bunch of a bunch of bots, a bunch of patrol bots and shredders. Um, they're annoying to fight. It spawns too many of them, and it's only them. Um, that's not like super engaging in combat to me. Though the caretaker fight is like it's an okay boss fight it's better than the dreads because it presents multiple different threats at you at once it's but it's still like an, an enormous bullet sponge with multiple different health gates that takes forever to kill and you have no pacing pressure whatsoever when you're fighting it um it can be somewhat exciting if you have like swarms still going on during the caretaker because like you have to like DP, do a bunch of DPS and then you have to back up for the, to fight the swarm and then you have to go back and do a bunch more DPS and then back up to fight the swarm again. Uh, but but even then it's like, I mean, I, I've heard it's good. I'm not super convinced. Um, some people enjoy it. I really don't. Um, I don't know. Like sabotage is just, it's just not very exciting. Um, and because there's no announced storms, it's just like ambient waves. There's just, there's just no pacing pressure whatsoever. It, you can like take forever on this. Uh, you can, and the Haxi objective is like, I don't know, it's, you press a button and like, uh, like a pretty easy swarm starts and, and you just, you just like, you just chill. Uh, 
and it and the mission type takes forever and it's like a bunch of like loading bars like literally like loading bars where haxi just just like you have to wait for the bar to complete and you have to keep enemies off it um and there's no like threat of losing ever in this mission type i don't know it's just not good um now that like i've learned to deal with the caretaker uh it's as with the rest like most of the boss fights in this game it's just not a very in engaging boss fight it's cool that like you can uh you can deal with caretaker using like different strategies like the the driller c4 satchel thing or whatever but the thing is you don't like you don't need to you don't need to the fight is you just have like two million resupplies and if your team is pretty decent at like dodging the stuff you're just not going to lose at this portion and it just sucks. I don't like Sabo. Sabo. I, I hate Sabo. Uh, D tier. I think it's better than Elim, actually, because at least you get to fight normal bugs in this mission type. Like, you you have, like, the Haxi Storms are their real combat, right? Um, but it's, I don't know. It's just not good. And last, we have Deep Scan. Deep Scan is the newest mission type. So I'm still a little unfamiliar with how to play it, but uh, I, I think it's actually pretty decent. It has a, a hot drop at the beginning that's like sometimes hot and sometimes not. You always drop into encounters, but sometimes there's no stationary, sometimes there's a couple stationaries. Usually it's pretty exciting uh, at the at the drop, but it's not like refinery tier really. Um, the mission type is a large labyrinth of a bunch of like very claustrophobic tight tunnels with occasional caves, um, and you know nature scattered about. And you have to travel around them to um, to to hit the what are they called the the crystals the resonance crystals um so right out of the bot box right out of the box it's taking a lot of the taking a lot of boxes wow i suck at talking um right right off the bat it's taking a lot of boxes that's what i was trying to say uh, like it forces you to explore that's cool i like exploring um but like it doesn't force you to explore the entire cave, so it doesn't, like, get dragged out. Like, you can choose how much or how little you want to explore. Like, you can just beeline with Driller to all the all the different nodes, um, and you can, you can, or you can, like, gradually walk through and clear every single cave at once. Um, the mission type, like, the, the little interface to find the thing is, like, a little, a little funky. It can be a little unintuitive at first, but once you get, a, like, a, a little familiar with it, it's not so bad. Um, uh, because like there's this, because you don't actually have to clear all the caves, it's actually makes for a very interesting player choice where you can choose to fight the, the caves, which have a reasonable stationary count. Not that many, but there, there are some, um, you can choose whether or not you want to fight in the caves and maintain control in the caves to like help your scout get nitro for example but you don't have to that's a pacing choice that you can actively circumvent if you're good enough or if you're good on nitro like that's cool um on top of that there are actual announced swarms in this mission type on top of ambient waves so there's significant nitro pressure like to put it into perspective the nitro is actually genuinely brutal in this mission type and part of that is probably because i haven't really figured out how to pace well on this mission type yet but like nearly all of my losses on this mission type are from nitro starvation in modded um which is sick like i i like that like it's a new mission type i shouldn't be able to just like play it on a difficulty that's difficult to me and consistently win with uh with my terrible pacing um that's that's awesome um on top of that the the objectives for this mission type are like they're 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 good uh i like it's kind of fun to like go around and look for stuff uh especially once you get reasonably good at it 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 becomes pretty rewarding to like be good at finding the resonance crystals um and once you find the resonance crystal it's extremely quick to finish it like you just call it down and you connect it up to the thing and you like hold the on it for like three seconds and and you're done um that's cool that's sick uh the second part of this mission type eh drill evader section like you have your scout permanently stuck repairing the thing or you die um because like the way the drill evader moves it's like set up so that it just kind of trivializes combat um if you're if you're if it's constantly moving so you're heavily incentivized to keep it constantly moving um and then like the stops are 
like they can be kind of exciting like because you get heavily swarmed and you have to jump around uh but you have shields and you have like bridge cutter and you have like st stun c4 or whatever for that so it's like it's it's really not that bad um you don't often lose in the drilling radar section so it, it, it it's a it's a little bit of a slog uh, it seems like kind of unnecessary and gratuitous honestly but it's it's not that long right relative to like the refinery repair phase it's not that long and you have to like keep up momentum in it and do it fast or you're gonna die to the swarm that's above you um i will say it scales pretty badly with some enemies like this is like this is stupid modded player bullshit right but uh we have like our blasts in our difficulties and our blasts are undodgeable in this scenario um and they said they would disable shellbacks in this section but shellbacks still spawn and they're like barrel down and instantly die in the bottom but like you still can't dodge the shellback very well because it comes down so fast. So you still like sometimes die and like stink kills will still pull you up and like deal like 70% of your health and damage. And I thought they said they would disable these sorts of enemies, but like they didn't because presumably they don't really have the difficulty controls to in custom difficulty, though we do in custom difficulty too, or we might in the future, uh, which is cool. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh the drill of section is really aggressively like mediocre. It's it's a weak point of the mission type, but it's also not that long. And the jetty boots at the end also seem a little like I don't know, they're a little unnecessary. You're just like especially since like Molly has to crawl all the way out of the geode back to the drop pod. Um I don't know, like you're just floating around and you're completely immortal. On one hand it's cool thematically, but like the, the like the fourth time you do it it's it gets a little boring because there's no there's no threat right like um there's no, there's no tension you just you just float around on your jetty boots and it can be a fun reward for a pretty difficult mission type but it's not that not that exciting to me um overall though i think this mission type is actually pretty good like on a theoretical level it it's it takes all the boxes for me um the one thing I will say about this mission type that I have a complaint with is that you're incentivized to like go and traverse these really small, tight tunnels. I don't like how tight the tunnel cave gen tends to be for this mission type, um, and I don't like that you're like the objectives are usually in the tunnels, like because I I don't know it's just not engaging for me to fight inside like a super cramped tunnel all the time. But the way it uh, the way th the cave gen works or the way probability works or something like that usually the the things are in the tunnels um which i don't know i wish there was like some incentive there's more incentive to fight in the caves themselves or a little more incentive so maybe like more of the crystals could be in the caves or something like that um and i don't like fighting in the deep scan tunnels because they're again they're like super super tight and that's annoying for me um but overall i think this like is a very fundamentally sound mission type and i could see it moving up in tiers in the future but i think for now i'm just gonna put it at the top of b tier um like maybe that will seem a little strange considering how much i complained about refinery but uh it's very possible that i like in the future i'm gonna realize i actually hate a bunch of things about deep scan and uh, it's gonna like fall down but i think it's probably going to move up in tier as i get better at the mission type and uh it becomes a little more comfortable and i get to play the the cool exploration part of the mission type a little more and a little faster and a little more competently um anyways that's the tier list uh let me know how horrendously wrong i am and how stupid my modded player opinions are uh 40 nature resupplies uh trivialized the the, the game and completely ruined mission flow um uh it, it, let me know how you feel about this sort of like slop content i i will probably release more of it if people like seem to like it um i'll probably release more of it if people don't seem to like it as well because like i just want to put out drg content but i don't want to put effort into it <laughs> yeah uh like subscribe uh comment dislike block unfollow uh, all, all that jazz. Uh, goodbye.